Story fifteen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Clarica. Sammy and Susie Littletail by Howard R. Garris. Story fifteen. Sammy and Susie at the Circus. Of course, you remember how Sammy Littletail dug a tunnel from the burrow to the pond, and how the water came in, of course. Well, Nurse Jane Fuzzy Wuzzy made a raft of corn stalks, and on this the whole rabbit family floated out of the burrow. Bully, the frog, who was a playmate of Sammy's, helped them. They had to go right out into the rain, and it was not very pleasant. "'Whatever are we going to do?' asked Mamma Littletail, but she did not scold Sammy for digging the tunnel and making all the trouble. "'Yes, we must get in out of the wet, or my rheumatism will be so bad I shall not be able to walk,' complained Uncle Wiggily Longears. "'I know what we can do,' proposed the muskrat nurse. "'What?' asked Susie Littletail. "'We can ask Mr. Groundhog to let us stay all night in his burrow,' suggested the nurse. "'I'm sure he will let us, for he has plenty of room.' Mr. Groundhog, who was an elderly creature, very fond of sleep in the winter, welcomed the rabbits to his burrow, and there they stayed out of the rain. In the morning the sun was shining brightly, and before very long the water all dried out of the bunnies' underground house, so that they could go back in it. One day, about a week after this, when Uncle Wiggily Longears was out walking with Sammy and Susie, going quite slowly because he was a trifle lame from rheumatism, Bully, the frog, came hopping up to them. "'Are you going to the circus?' he asked. "'Circus? What circus?' asked Sammy, who was interested very quickly, you may be sure. "'Why, the animal circus that is always held in the woods every spring. They do all sorts of queer things to get ready for the summer. I'm going. It's lots of fun. Better come.' "'I haven't seen any circus posters up,' remarked Susie. "'Of course not,' answered Bully. "'The animals never put them up, "'because they don't want a lot of people coming to look on and bother them. "'Do you want to come? It's not very far.' "'But we have no one to take us,' spoke Susie. "'Yes, you have,' exclaimed Uncle Wiggily Longears quickly. "'I will take you myself. "'It would never do for you children to go to a circus alone. "'I will take you.' "'But your rheumatism is so bad you can hardly walk,' objected Susie. "'Besides, it will be worse if you sit in the woods.' "'Never mind about that,' answered the uncle bravely. "'I'll manage to stand it. "'I am determined you children shall not go to that circus alone. "'Of course, I don't care anything about a circus myself, "'but I must take care of you.' "'And the elderly rabbit looked very brave, "'though the pain of his rheumatism was quite bad. "'My father is going to hop over three stumps,' said Bully the Frog, quite proudly. "'Come on, or we may be late.' So Uncle Wiggily took Sammy and Susie to the animal circus, and Bully, the frog, went also. He had a free ticket, because his father was one of the performers. They had reserved seats on big toadstools, though Bully said they ought to be called frog stools, as frogs used them more than toads did. Then the performance began, after the birds had sung an opening chorus. The bunny children had a jolly time. They saw some pigeons give airship exhibitions that were better than any flying machines you ever heard of. They watched the snakes make hoops of themselves, through which jumped squirrels and rabbits. It was so exciting that Uncle Wiggily Longears clapped his paws as hard as he could. Then Dr. Possum, who was not very busy taking care of sick people that day, hung downward from a limb by his tail ever so long. But when Bully's papa jumped over three big stumps at once, without so much as touching one, well, you should have heard the clapping and shouting then. Best of all, Sammy and Susie liked the baby deer, who stood up on his hind legs and danced, while a crow whistled. It was so exciting that Sammy and Susie almost forgot to eat the candy-covered carrots and the molasses cabbage which their uncle had bought for them. It was the best time they had ever remembered, and they talked of nothing else on their way home. Even Uncle Wiggily's rheumatism seemed better. Now, if nothing happens, I'm going to tell you tomorrow night of an adventure Sammy Littletail had with a snake. 
End of Story 15